Romans chapter 6. The key word in this chapter, sin. Continue from chapter 5. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Now there are people in churches who say, yeah, go ahead. There are churches that openly practice sin. Shall we continue sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now we're going to talk about the death of the Christian. Let's, let's read what we're talking about. According to Paul, I am dead to sin. Know ye not that so many of us are bap were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. There is no water. Many will go, oh, see water, 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 the water in the brain. Now, when I was baptized, and every Bible believer that's baptized, they're standing in the water. And this is the illustration. The pastor puts you under the water. And then he pulls you out. Now you stand there and your testimony to the people is, I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I am making a public announcement, a public dedication that what I've done, and I am following the Bible. He puts you under water, death. That's what they did to Jesus. He was there. They put him in a tomb. They buried him, rock. In a grave, they bury you with dirt. Well, here, water represents the ground, dirt. You're completely immersed in death. And as Christ was resurrected, so the pastor brought you out of the ground, out of the water, out of death. So that baptism is not just something, look what I'm doing. That baptism puts that pastor in the eyes of God as what he done with his son. His son died. His son was buried. And God rose, resurrected his son unto life. And you need to get that when we go into this chapter. The, the, the baptism. Forget the water. What it symbolizes the death, burial, and resurrection. Now, God puts you on the water. That's death. You die. Now what Paul's going to talk about is when he brings you out of water, don't bring that flesh. You bring the new creature, the new man, you bring that soul that has been regenerated by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You leave that flesh down there. Nobody wants a dead carcass hanging around. That's what all these horror movies and, and these uh, uh, flesh-eating creatures. We need to get that as we go into Romans chapter 6 so early. Therefore, we are buried with him. By the baptism of death. Remember he told James and John, can you be baptized in the baptism I will be baptized? That's definitely not talking about water. And with this scripture here, what we saw in the gospel, we're talking about death. And yes, James and John, James suffered a violent death. John, he suffered. But he didn't suffer as much as the other apostles suffered when it came to death. But you're going to die. Unto death. Into death into death into into the water into the grave that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in newness of life when we come out of that water as christians that's it, that's it this is a new life i'm a newborn babe i'm gonna make mistakes that flesh stays in the water that flesh stays in the grave and when you resurrect that flesh you become a zombie for if we have been planted planted what, what's planted mean put in dirt first john 3 9 if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Now, why wasn't that thief baptized? Because he's going to die right away. And he's not going to come back in sin. 
And we need to realize when we talk about baptism, it's not just the pastor put me under water, whoopie do. We've got to realize we're going to make a testimony to everybody, family, friends, and, and, and church members, and, and saints, and brethren. I value the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I value the fact is I will become a new creature in Christ. Knowing this, you're supposed to know this. As you age as a Christian, you're supposed to, when you read your Bible all the way through, throughout the year, you're supposed to know this. If people don't read their Bible all, they don't know nothing, they're going to have, Judgment Seat of Christ, Romans 6, 6, all right, here's a test. What do you, do you know about the, the baptism? Oh, yeah, I was put in water. <clears throat> Failed. With hay or stubble. This is coming up at the, at the Christian Judgment Seat of Christ, knowing this. There is a test at the judgment seat of Christ. What you don't get right goes wood, hay, or stubble. Knowing this, that our old man, Mr. Flesh, just for me, Mr. Flesh, all about me, me, myself, and I, that's the old man, is crucified with him, killed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Look at that. Your flesh in the eyes of God when you got saved is dead. And yet we have two natures. We've got the spirit and we got the flesh. You know, oh, I'm, I'm going to fight Satan with a water gun, blah, 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 and all the devils. And I, you know, you, you know, the biggest fight we all have is with that this body is supposed to be dead. Ooh, me. I want chocolate and sugar. Shut up, you're dead. Sugar. You're dead. Sugar. Dead. Sugar. And there are times I say to my dead body, all right, go ahead and feed yourself. Now, that's not the spirit and that's not the soul. That was circumcised. That spiritual surgery with the word of God, Hebrews 4.12. And realize you're carrying about that new man, and you're not supposed to carry about the old man, but he still hangs around. He still gives you trouble. It's supposed to be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. And when we do sin, what is it? It's that old man. It's that thing that's supposed to be in the grave. It's not your soul. That's God's. I'm a child of God. Well, you know, well, you see that sin? Yeah, that's the old nature. And how do we get over that according to what the Bible says? When God gives us a new body. Either he's going to put us in a grave. I mean death. Or he's going to rapture us out, out one of these days. Death. Being dead. The doctor pronounces you get a death certificate. Or the rapture. That body never more will ever sin again. If I were to die any time and the doctor said, you know, here's a, here's a certificate of death, you can put all the sugary candy food cakes and all that in my, in my coffin. I, it's not going to do me no good. I'm not going to want it. Because that sinner is dead. It's gone. But all right now, it comes out of the grave. It don't want brains. It wants sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Realize, if we have been planted together, verse 5, and if we are dead, and the baptism symbolizes the death, the grave, do you realize when you plant the seed, that seed is dead, and you put it in the ground, and you get a new nice life. So if you're, if you're gardening, farming, if you're flowers, you put that seed in the ground, that's you. That, that's your own nature. And what comes up, something beautiful, something fruitful. Look at that. That's you supposed to be in Christ. What about that flaky skin? And so That's still on the ground, dead. And so what God wants us to look at is when we look at gardening, we look at plants, we look at... That is also symbolic of what we are to be to Christ. 
And yet too many Christians, the flower is underground and the roots are springing out of the ground. That's not beautiful. That's not right. Keep the roots underground and bring that beautiful flower fragrance to God. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Okay, I sin. God is not ever going to leave me. God's not ever going to denounce me because of my sins. Because they've already been judged at Calvary. Now my sins is the problem is, is what they're going to do to this body. Like I said, using sugar. If I keep on doing sugar, 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 well, my body is going to break down. And I have no right to say, God, what are you doing? It's, it's what you did to that corpse. And then, yeah, we got first job. Then the sin that we do have, since God is holy, he looks at us like there's that zombie walking around fulfilling the flesh, and that's not right. We ought to be the, the spirit, the, the fullness of the new man. That's what God should see in our life. And every once in a while, I see that little flesh come up. Now, if we be dead with Christ. Well, that's interesting. If we be dead with Christ. And then in this flesh, I have no life. And it's the spirit and the soul of God that gives me life. So that rules out taking care of anything for yourself. Because Christ was never selfish. We believe that we shall also live with him. Eternal life. We're living today, yes. Are we living for Christ? Christ liveth in me? Or are we living for the flesh? Or are we trying to serve the middle of the road religion? Too many people get the shovel out Sunday morning to, to dig up the corpse. I take that back. Hold on. Too many people grab the shovel on Sunday morning and try to bury that corpse. And go to church with a newness of spirit. And then as soon as church is over, they go out, undig that corpse, and say, okay, come on, let's go have fun for the rest of the week. I'll put you back in the grave on, on Sunday morning. That's not the way it should be. And we're going to sin. Why? Because we're still in this flesh. And the, and the body will suffer. And your fellowship with God will suffer if you give more to your flesh. Now, if we be dead with Christ... We believe that we shall also live with him. I, I'm going to be with Christ forever. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over it. I believe at the rapture my dead body will rise. I believe at the rapture if I'm alive my body will go up in the air and meet in the clouds. After the, either, after the rapture I don't, know, I don't know if I'm going to die or meet the rapture. But let's say we die before the rapture. At the rapture, when we meet Jesus, according to Romans chapter 6, we'll never die again. Christ never died again. And yet there's a religion out there that says he dies every time you partake of him. That's not the Bible teaching. So what is the, the frame of my salvation that I will get eternal life by what the Gospels have told me? Romans chapter 6, because I died like Christ, and I don't need to die anymore, because Christ died once, I'm going to die once. Now you get the thing with somebody who's not saved. Death and hell cast up the graves were in them, and they're judged by the book. They get a second death. That's what Revelation 20 says. You die twice, you're lost. You die once, you're in Christ. You're just as Christ. For he that it for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But what are you doing every time you have a service that, oh, here he's dead. And But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. 
Hebrews 9, 28, 10, 2, 10, 12, 1 Peter 3, 18. Jesus Christ will never die again, and neither anybody who has believed on him as their Savior. Don't think about, oh, when I get in glory, I'll be there, and then we're going to die again. No, never again. There are no death, no cemeteries or graveyards in New Jerusalem. It's over with. Death will be vanished. That's gone. And for some lucky Christians that are living when the rapture happens will never, ever see death like Enoch. Elijah was called up, but he's coming back and he's going to die. Moses gets to die twice. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. Don't go to a Jesus that keeps dying over and over and over and over. That's not scriptural. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. We're going to live unto God. All right. Likewise. Now remember we talked about in chapter 5, we talked about Adam and Jesus. The main thing now is sin. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Well, I got a problem with, my, with, with a sin in my life. You're dead to it. Just say, hey, body, shut up. You're dead. Get back in that graveyard. And that will work sometimes. And sometimes you'll give in. We're sinners. But the biggest thing to, to defeat sin at that present moment. Get back in that graveyard, will you? Just get back in the dark. You're dead. Shut up. Dead people don't talk. Shut up. And sometimes we're going to listen to that corpse. That's wrong. When you got to listen to the corpse, then you know you're sinned against God. But, alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the new man. That's the new creature. You're dead and you're alive. How's that living with You got the flesh and you got the spirit. And we'll get, I think it's Ephesians. We'll get into Ephesians. There's a battle going on with you right now. The Holy Spirit wants to do right and the, the, the flesh wants to do wrong. But Paul is telling us the flesh is dead. Your sins are dead to God. Let not sin therefore reign power, kingship in your mortal dead body. My soul and my spirit are immortal and are purchased by God. That body later on will get redeemed, but not now. But they, but ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Don't obey it. Get victory over it. Do right. Do what God tells you to do. Chapter 13, verse 14. Neither yield ye your members, eyes, fingers, toes, think, uh, hands, arms, legs, mouth, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Don't let the, the parts of your body sin. Don't give in to it. Don't yield. But yield yourselves unto God. Do right. Let God get the victory. And notice we have not seen a, a name here shown up. We have not seen Satan. We don't go blaming Satan for all our sins. It's our fault. There's God the Father, Satan, he's a father, and there's your body. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, spirit, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Keep that body in the grave and with your spirit and your soul serve God. It will keep you out of trouble. It will keep you right with God. God, when he looks down your life, doesn't want to see a corpse hanging on to you. And that's what he sees. For sin shall not have dominion over you. 
Some people allow it, and it, it shouldn't. Everything you do for the flesh, if the Lord tarries, it's going to the graveyard. And then even that, some things you can't, you can't take materialistic things with you to the graveyard. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to do you no good. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Grace. Great grace. That's the victory in God. It's not the law. Many people say, well, we're not under law, we're under grace. What about that, that corpse you're carrying around? The Bible just said, if you carry that sin around, you're under the law. Grace says, keep it buried. Keep it down. Grace says, do God. Do righteousness. Law says, take care of the flesh. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. There are people who are looking for, give me excuse to sin, and churches are giving it to them today. Paul says, no. Don't sin. And yet if we sin, 1 John 1, we have an advocate, the Father. We're going to sin, but the Bible says don't. And if we do, we got an advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. But don't. Isn't that, isn't that going against each other? No, because that flesh is powerful. That flesh will come up and will win. And God has provided us the blood to wash away the sin. But set out your day tomorrow morning when you listen. I am not going to sin today. You can't say that. Paul says, shall we go ahead and sin? No, don't. Yield to God. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You decide to serve the flesh, that's going to be your root. That's going to be your pathway. It's destruction. It's death. You say, we're going to die anyway. But obedience unto righteousness. We can go ahead and die, the Lord tarries, but we'll get righteousness. We'll get accounted with obedience, gold, silver, or precious stone. If we do that with right. When we're judged at the judgment seat of Christ, there's wood, hay, stubble, gold, silver, precious stones. Every Christian is going to have wood, hay, or stubble. Not all Christians are going to have gold, silver, or precious stones. That word hay or stubble is obeying the flesh. The gold, silver, precious stones when we obey God into righteousness. It's your choice. And we're going to fail because we're sinners. All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. We do wrong. But what is your motive? What is your heart set to do? And when you do sin, if your heart is set to God, you're going to be sorry. That sin won't be because I wanted to, I had to. That's going to be, oops. Oh, man. But when you say, oh, I need it, I have to do it, then you're, that's the flesh. It's out of the grave. Wood, hay, or stubble. And when a Christian gets wood, hay, or stubble, that's your own fault. Because Romans 6 is telling us, don't do it. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. I was. I sinned all the time before I got saved. But ye have obeyed from the heart. Got that? Thank you, Paul. 
that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Christ died for your sins, was buried according to the scriptures, and arose again the third day. I believe that. All right. You're no more a sinner. That flesh is what you're not. And the judgment seat of Christ is you will be judged what you did with that flesh. Not with your soul. Your soul's already been bought. What'd you do with that flesh? Who did you yield that flesh to? You'll be tried by fire. Being then made free from sin, the day you got saved, you're free from sin. Set free. But I still sin. That's the flesh. Stop it. Paul said, don't yield to it. You can say no to your flesh. It's hard. But you can do it. Ye became the servants of righteousness. Well, how can you become the servants of righteousness and then serve the flesh, according to verse 16? You're going against the new nature of your creature that God's made you. That new creature that we become and you go back to the... That's a violation of what God wanted us to do. New creature, not an old creature. I speak after the manner of men. Because of the infirmity of your flesh. Oh boy, see, your flesh is bad. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, ooh, a snowball. You take a little ball, you roll it in the snow, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger, and bigger. That's your sin. That was your life before you're saved. Even so, now, now, yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. Leave that old world behind, step forward, and become a new creature, and serve God. Melt that snowball in the blood of Jesus Christ, and get right. And remember, when you do sin, you got an advocate, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. For when ye were the servants of sin, before you were saved, Ye were free from righteousness. You had no righteousness in you. Now look at that. If you've never come to Christ by the gospel, you had no righteousness. You couldn't get saved. You wouldn't go to heaven. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? What fruit did those sins become? In my body right now, I am dealing with fruit that sin has caused sin has done when I was growing up as a child. I suffer from diabetes. Diabetes is a fruit of my sin. Let me tell you another fruit of your sin. Hi, I'm such and such. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. I'm your son or your daughter. <gasps> what? Well, you remember this person? You remember this woman? You remember this guy? Oh, yeah. That's a fruit. The Bible calls children fruit. Fruit of the room. There are some people that they come knocking on your door. You don't even realize. And now, hey, you got a child you never knew. That's the fruit. Lost years with that child. Ashamed. You may not even care about that person you were slept with. Ashamed. Your liver's ruined because the sins you did before you got saved. Ashamed. For the end of those things is death. That's before you were saved. Paul's writing to save people. Get that in this chapter. I'm going to read something to you very important. But now being made free from sin. The only thing I suffer from sin now as a Christian is that the judgment seat of Christ would hair stubble. Because I've got righteousness by Jesus Christ. Oh, look what style he's doing. Okay, if I don't confess it, it'll be wood hair stubble. I can't believe what that guy's doing. All right, wood hair stubble. 
If I confess it in the blood of Jesus Christ and I don't yield to it all the time, God says, what sins are you talking about? He's free. And become servants to God. I am a servant of God. By the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in April 1987, I became free from sin. I became a servant of God. I became a child of God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness. So being a, a sinner and being righteous, they both have fruits. One's rotten fruit, naughty fruit, evil fruit, Jeremiah with the figs, and one fruit is great and glorious, gold, gold, silver, precious stone. And the end, everlasting life. All right. Let's say I go out and uh, drink my whole life away. That's death. That will, got, that will not get me no rewards of the judgment seat of Christ at whatever point in my life I got saved. All that alcohol, all that money, all the stuff with it, death. I got saved. Let's get right there. I got saved. I believed in the gospel. I get eternal life. What fruit do you get? I'm going to New Jerusalem by Jesus Christ. What fruit do I get? I get to be with the one that died for me. I'm talking about the day you got saved. For now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have, so ye would be the servants of God, save people, have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. So when a doctor fills out a death certificate, number one thing that caused death is that guy is a sinner. Then being hit by a bus, then cancer or whatever. And verse 23 is great to use for witnessing to people. But 23 with 22, he's talking to Christians. And Christian, if you sin, you will die. So where do you get with this Mary Baker Eddy crap? That, oh, we're all going to be healed. We're all, there's no such thing as pain and suffering. Not if you sin. And you still haven't made that phone call from your grave. Miss Eddie was a sinner because she died. If the Lord tarries, I will die because I'm a sinner. Being saved, getting saved, being a righteousness of God, having the fruits of righteousness, being a servant, being a child of God will not stop my death if I sin. And there's that one great grace, if it would happen in your lifetime, the fact is that the rapture would happen while you're alive, you won't see death. But your sins will still be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, remember that. You will die even if you get saved, but remember that eternal life that you die because of your sin, you'll live under Christ forever. Death is and or rapture will finally get the 100% victory over your body. Right now, you guys struggle. And what's Paul say about it? Don't yield to the flesh, yield to God. What's John say about it? And if we sin, we have an advocate. What's Paul say about it? All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. What's the problem that I and all Christians talking about? <clears throat> What's the problem? We give into that dead body. And we come to the realization that when we serve that dead, stinking corpse that Martha says has been in there for four days, he stinketh. We ought to get when that, when that corpse come up. What's that? Oh, give me that shovel. Get down, will you? But no, we don't. We like sleeping with the corpse. Pharaoh said... One more night with the frogs. Really? They were in your beds. They were in your ovens. They were just everywhere. And you want one more night. You want that corpse one more time. And we as Christians know what that corpse does. 
and we want it. And we make fun of these people, the, the, the zombie apocalypse, the zombie movies and all that, and we carry around our own zombie when Paul says, no, give unto God. Give unto God. We are weird people in Christ. Because we carry around a dead body that's supposed to have been buried and left buried. When we said before our friends, before our family, before our church, before I'm going down in that water representing death. I am dying to myself. And I'm coming out as Christ came up to live under Christ. And then I don't do I don't yield to the body. I don't I, I mean I don't yield unto God, I yield unto the body. Confess that sin that you made at your baptism that you're not living unto the, to Christ. You're living unto your flesh. Let the flesh die. And it's very powerful because we need an advocate when we sin. Because we're going to sin. That's how hard the battle is. We read in Corinthians today. Paul is a man committing fornication in church. Turn that guy over to Satan. Paul. For the destruction of what? The flesh. Put that man in the grave so he can't sin no more. And maybe he earned enough rewards at the judgment seat of Christ that they will not be destroyed anymore. His flesh is already destroying him. Let Satan at him. You may, sound, you may say that's cruel. Well, you got a Christian who's just serving the flesh, you know it's going to be to no good. Now he's saved. But he's not going to be happy at the judgment seat of Christ. And when it's time of need, time of seriousness, he's going to turn to the father and what's the father going to do? I mean, the, the prodigal son could not call from the pigsty, Father! No, he had to go back to the father's house get on his knees and repent to the father before the father would give him his coat, the, the robe and the fatty calf. We got to realize when we sin, we're serving our flesh, our old nature, and that is enmity with God. And yet in the eyes of God, we're freed from sin. If God were to remove this flesh totally, then that's it. We're perfect. When I am absent from the body and present with the Lord, I will have no sin. It's in the graveyard or wherever my body ends up. When we're raptured, it's left behind. It's still unconfessed sin will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Wood, hay or stubble, gold, silver, or precious stone. That which for Christ will last, that which was for self and the flesh burns up. Baptism is a symbol that we are going to change and do right before God. I wish that's taught to many Christians before it happens, but in many cases it doesn't. Then 